Michelle Lopez, the Michelle Lopez. I'm excited to be here with you today, sis. I'm Exchanging excited that energy. you're here. Thank you so much for having me in your space. It's beautiful. And the first thing I thought of is when I first met you, Lopez, hold on. This sister is a beautiful black, brown skinned sister, but are you Spanish too? Because oh, Lopez no, no, is a Spanish that. name. I'm still that. I'm still that beautiful <laughs> black, brown. But yes, my father is um, Hispanic. Okay. So I have Mexican in my blood. So That's beautiful Mexican having American. both sides of the world. So tell me a little bit about where you are originally from. Um, I was born in D.C. So okay. I'm a D.C. girl. Um, but I moved to Fairfax, Virginia when I was about 12. And so really I was raised in, in Fairfax. Which so I am also a Virginia girl. I yes. love Virginia. It is all of me. And you know, us being from this area, we really call it the DMV. D.C., yes. Maryland, Virginia. Yes. It's very close to one another. So that's what it's called. Not, you know, the transportation uh, company. DMV. D.C., Maryland, Virginia. But... That had to be interesting, spending time in D.C. and then moving to Virginia. Tell me about that. Was it a shock? I mean, hmm. what part of D.C. did you grow up in? And then I remember when I moved to Virginia, the first thing I told, told my parents was, this is country. That's how I felt moving from Maryland, that it was so many trees and nature, but really it was just a whole different world I felt like I was moving into. What about you? Um, when I moved to Fairfax, it was, um, I don't want to say a shock, but as a little girl, I already was dealing with trying to figure out where I fit in. Mm -hmm. And so when I moved to Fairfax, now I go from Maryland where everyone looks like me, but then I have to fight. They don't like me much. And then I moved to Fairfax and no one looks like me. It was like, okay, so now I want to be thinner and I want, instead of having wavy hair, I want my hair straight and everyone has blue eyes and green eyes and okay, the only thing that we really have in common is that I have this little straight pointy nose but everything else is different. And so it was a shock. It it really fed into more of my insecurity as just being a young girl and trying to figure out where my place was. And I love how open and raw you are about that because we all have insecurities and we all go through things, especially how old were you when you moved to Virginia? 12. Right. Pre-teen years, hormones going crazy. Oh. Like that's when I moved to Virginia. Oh. Um, and I can imagine that it took some time to adjust, but that, you know, you had some things that you had to go through that built you into the woman that you are today. Who were those people in your life that were your support system growing up? Really? It was my grandmother. Mm. It was my grandmother. You know, as a teenager, I used to have a program for the youth mm -hmm. for many, many years. And one of the reasons why I had it is because I struggled terribly. I was like a runaway teen. And so I could not figure out where I fit. And my grandmother would always pour into me and she'd say, you know how amazing you are? You know how many lives you're gonna affect? And I would look at her like, who is she talking about me? I mean, she knew what I was doing, but she would always speak what she wanted to see, what she already saw in me before I saw it in myself. It was a struggle. My high school years for me were awful. I mean, at 13, I think I was struggling with depression. I, listen, at that age, you don't know what I know now, which means that you weren't meant to fit in. I wasn't meant to fit in. I was meant to stand out. Born to stand out. And I was born that way. And God created me that way for a purpose. But when you're younger and you're trying to fit in, it's difficult because you don't know that. And even if someone tells it to you, it's a very difficult position to be in because it's like, who am I? Where do I fit? No one looks like me. I halfway have friends, right? And... Now I've become rebellious because I don't know. Now I'm in search of something that I have no idea what I'm searching for. And so my uh, junior high school and high school years, you know, they just were, for me, very traumatic. Now, I think part of that is when you're born with a gift and I you're born really. to just stand out. And I, I laugh now and I'm because I am the person that will stand in my truth and I will stand alone. I was that child. Mm -hmm. I was the child that said, well, why should I? And who said I had to do that? And what, like, you have to explain it to me or I'm doing opposite, right? Mm -hmm. And back then it's like, okay, Michelle, you're being rebellious. Right, or you're talking back. Yes, <laughs> and shut up. Right. Right, not 
not knowing that it was the gift that God had given me. Mm. And you have three brothers, so mm -hmm. you didn't have sisters. Nope. And, you know, even friends that, you know, I like to call my sisters, not friends. That was probably hard for you, too. Oh, it was difficult. But let me tell you something. And I always wanted sisters. Mm. So for me, the beauty in all this is that God gave me a gift for women because I always wanted sisters. And I'd be like, well... You know, I don't have anybody I can talk to. So what it did, though, it, it made me tough. Mm. Like, I became like... I was a Don't female. mess with me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is who I am. Right. And I had to be able to stand my ground. Yeah. And I had to be able to, like, buck my rear, my shoulders back and say what it was and n not be afraid to do that. And so it taught me that. But that has been my careers. That has been in my adult life. So, again, God does things. He's so strategic. And we don't know. But it is before we were born he says, I knew you, I formed you. And so I realized later, you're not just a product of your parents. I'm a product of the purpose and plan of God. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I have ways of them, but he designed me for what it is that he had for me to do. The struggle was I did not know. So I felt like the odd man up. That's very real. And it took a certain type of woman to get to where you are today. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about it, but speak to me a little bit more about who was she. And faith, it seems like played oh. a big part Heart and the Huge. woman that you are today. It is my entire life. You know, being a very young mother, I was a mother at 18. I was married and divorced with three kids before I was 30. She's brave. She has been battle tested. She, ha I've known what it is to have nothing. And I've also known what it is to have everything and then to have everything and to have lost it and to have regained it. And so what all of that has built in me is character. And for me, that is the most important thing is character. And so when we talk about success, for me, success is not just money. That is inclusive of it when you're understanding your purpose and you know who you are. But success literally is finding what it is. You're here for a reason. What it is that you're meant to do here on this earth. That purpose. That's the purpose, right? Pursuing that and enjoying the journey. So for me, I've been around so much that nothing much impresses me unless it's character and integrity associated with it. That's very real, mm -hmm. and I stand on that too, which is why I know why we click for those reasons alone, like our morals and our values, and having mentors is so important to me, and I look mm -hmm. up to you as a mentor, and I know that you've had many mentors along mm -hmm. the way. What's one of the best pieces of advice a mentor has given you? Oh, you know, I have a couple, but the, the one that I live by is what my grandmother taught me and she said when you don't know what to do do nothing mm, and so stillness. for me it is as in the bible it says be still and know but i want to be clear that it's not in the being still it's in the knowing in the knowing that no matter what season you're in in life that everything is going to be okay that it is still working for you whether it's a bad season or a good season because everything changes so it's like you're in a good season now but you have to prepare for another season in whatever season that i am in just to be still still and know that like God got me. And how do I know he has? Because he's got a proven track record. I'm here. It, it, the cat's out the bag healthy. now. <laughs> no, the cat is out the bag now. Like and he has proven over and over again how amazing he is. So for me, it's even when I don't know, I still know that I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And that everything is happening for your greater good. Absolutely. At the end of the day. Absolutely. Um, even those dark times, those traumatic times, you know. First of all, I don't believe in things being good or bad. I believe that, you know, everything is to serve its purpose mm. for our greater good, no matter how that looks, whether it's down or up. But with that being said, you mentioned being a mom at a very young age, mm -hmm. having three kids, being married, and then mm -hmm. divorced at a very young age. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine. I'm mm -hmm. I'm in my early 30s and I'm not even married oh, yet. Honey, you know I, was what I, mean? I was raising three kids. <laughs> and um, <laughs> would you consider some of those moments being some of the darkest times you've been through? Or what was one of those darkest moments you've been through and who was? Or how did you pull through, Sid? You know what? My children have been my greatest teachers. Mm. When I look at it now, it's like, okay, you did that the wrong way. You shouldn't have had kids early and you're supposed to like, you know, go to college and then get married, like enjoy your life and then get right. married. But for me, I 
think they saved my life. If I didn't get myself together, that they wouldn't be together, that, that I really was all they had. That wasn't the darkest time because uh, they're the reason they, it pulled me out of depression. Uh, but I think that a lot of it was hard. I tried to not show them so much of the weakness. And sometimes I think I should have showed them more of that because if you don't, then your children end up thinking you're superwoman. But the reality of it is it was many nights that I cried. It was many times that I didn't know how the rent was going to be paid. That was before I bought houses. I, I had no idea. And so was that the darkest time? I don't know because you do what you have to do as women. I didn't even give it a second thought. But probably one of the darkest moments was when I became successful and then the recession hit and I lost everything. It's one thing to never know success financially. It's another thing to know it and then lose it. That is actually worse. What that does is it teaches you what is important. It teaches you about people. It teaches you about uh, motives. It teaches you about yourself and your arrogance. And you know, it's funny because this is one of the things that I think about us. What happens is when we go through Who's trouble, us? people, Okay. All of us, the majority of us, when we go through trouble, God, please get me out of this. If you get me out of this, I'll never do this again. This is never going to happen again. And then the moment that the trouble ends, it's almost like we forget we were in trouble in the first place. And so what losing everything did for me once I had gained it and literally made a promise to my children that it would get better and it did their entire life change. Now, they didn't know. They didn't go back to the struggle that I had initially. It was very humbling. And so it taught me that no matter what position that you're in, one, it really isn't about you. It is about you being here to serve and what the purpose is. And two, that the greatest moments that meant the most to me had nothing to do with money. Absolutely nothing to do with money. It had to do with the time that I spent with my children when we didn't have anything and you might not know what Redbox is. You I do know what oh, Redbox okay, okay. is. I'm not, you but, know, uh, I'm a millennial, okay? okay? I remember life before a cell phone. But honestly, <laughs> I went from crazy and steak and shrimp and being basketball mom and traveling yeah. all over with my to like all we could do is me putting 99 cents in there getting a movie and buying yeah. some microwave look and, and, and we used to go to Blockbuster every Friday okay I was I, was Child, I couldn't even do that because didn't Blockbuster have a membership <laughs> Child, I couldn't afford that when I lost everything so it don't even <laughs> But here's the look. Blockbuster man, Blockbuster man, going out of service during that time too, though, because they did, you know, they had right. their, But their the moment. idea was that I realized the that little what things. really mattered was just the time that we spent together. And most of the time, what they wanted from me was not all the stuff. Yeah, they wanted my time, and I spent so much time working trying to get them so that there was no more struggle. That in the in between, I feel like I sort of missed some time. Whether whether am I regretful or ashamed? I do not live with shame. I don't live with it. Mm -hmm. I think that every one of us does the best that we can and until we know better. And when we know better, we do better. Exactly. I, as I grew and as I grew as a person and a woman and as a mother and as a parent, I did better. And as a parent, I mean, you have to make sacrifices. And oh, I would do it all over again. Exactly. I would do it all over again. I would do all of it all over again. And I used to feel ashamed because I used to be like, well, shoot, uh, I just became a parent. Like I didn't I didn't go off to school. I didn't. And my reality was, yeah, I, I don't. What, what I did and the life that I live and what I was able to accomplish. We're not even talking about this career. I'm just talking about me making it through and being able to raise them by myself, the three of them, two boys and a girl, and they are like great human beings. Like just what I was able to accomplish. Yeah, I have no shame in that. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And that's beautiful. And that's one of your greatest accomplishments. It, it absolutely is. When it's all said and done, you know, that's part of your legacy. Yeah, I, absolutely. And, absolutely. And in terms of legacy, Legacy, when it is all over and said and done, what do you want to leave behind for young women in specific? What pieces of advice could you give? What purpose do you feel like you've served for these young women? At my age, which is 50, um, this and is, don't look it at all. Well, come on, Jesus. I, I believe mean, that too. Wait, I mean, me they you. do say come black on, don't crack, but I mean, you know. Like, I okay, mean, let me get back. God is good. Let's just say that. Hello. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I really, I really, 
here's here's what I want people to know. The first thing is at, at any point in your life mm -hmm. that you decide that you want it to be different, it can be and it will be. That's the first thing. If things aren't the way that you want them to be, change it. Uh, the other thing that I really want to leave with people is treat every moment as if it owes you something. You know, I think that especially for now and this generation is so different from when I grew up, like there was no social media, there was right. no, all of that is different now. But I think that somehow we think that tomorrow we're going to wake up and we're going to be successful and things are going to fall from the tree and the money going to just be floating and, you know, and it's going to happen. And the idea is nothing trumps hard work, nothing trumps the years of growth and self actualization. One of the greatest things that I ever did for myself in my life, because no matter where you come from, so your life has been different from mine, you know, and I could say, oh my God, my parents weren't together and I went through this and I went through that as a child. And rightfully so, I could say that. But when I decided to take ownership over my life and my choices and not place blame on everybody yeah. else is when my life changed. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to leave a legacy of bravery, tenacity that the reason why I've won is because I just decided not to quit. I decided that I was going to bet on myself and God. And I think that when you do that, you will find that life changes. You will see things from a different lens. And so I want people to show up for themselves in their life and be present in their life and take ownership over their life and do what it is that you have in your heart to do, the thing that's called purpose. And until you find it, if if you don't know what to do, do nothing but keep moving. Mm. And know that it is okay that life has these shifts and these turns. And you, my grandmother used to tell me all the time, oh, you want to know what's funny? She would be like, you can make all them plans all you want to, but understand that God's plans are the ones that are going to prevail. Yes. And so the idea is to really throw up your hands and say, okay, what am I here for? What am I supposed to be doing? How is it that you want me to serve and help me do that? And be okay with taking the journey and enjoying the journey. Because mm, it's not just about the destination. It's about the road that gets it us there. It really is. And the other thing is you got to know, and I, and I, and I, and I have learned really recently and over the years at this age that, you know, we ask God to open doors for us. He's not opening doors for us. He's opening doors because he needs a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that he trusts me, that when the door is open, that he now has a seat at the table is the biggest gift and the biggest blessing that I could ever have. So you got to understand that this thing is not all about you. But when you understand that, somehow he twists it and then it becomes, okay, now I'm going to take your ordinary and I'm going to put my extra on it mm. and you'll become extraordinary. To talk about the trauma and then the healing and, mm. and everybody's healing journey, it all takes you back to God. Because none Absolutely. of this um, is possible. With the, I always say that we do the possible <clears throat> while God does the impossible in our lives. And here's the idea, and I was just thinking about this today, just in my prayer time. Mm -hmm. The idea is, you know, me at this age, understanding that literally the world don't have a whole bunch to offer. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. And, and the people that you think yeah. care really don't. Well, <laughs> but here's the thing. When you have a relationship with God, it really is okay okay. Yeah. Like you really start learning to be okay with certain things. You really start understanding like I'm here for a reason and the reason is to serve and the reason is this. And I don't got to fight that battle if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because it'll take care. Sometimes even in the, that's why I said it's in being still and no, but it's in the knowing. It's in the knowing that no matter what happens, it's working for you and that you're going to be okay. If I could have, when I was 13 years old, going through so much turmoil in my life, if I could have known it's going to be okay, like it's going to be okay, just don't quit. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like you got a tiptoe, like you, you're slumped over and it's 
Because right. we have, I mean, life happens to everybody. We have those moments where sometimes you just feel like you're walking on eggshells. Like you can't, it's or in like, the mud. You, like we said, like us millennials say, getting it out the mud. Well, Literally. Yeah. Well, see, I didn't hear that. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> because like, you know, like, like, like oh. that quicksand that you know you well, keep it's going. Like you're stuck, mm-hmm. right? But even in that, if you just don't quit, even if the steps, like in the mud, are like, mm-hmm. and understand that it soon will loosen up. Because remember that I said no season stays the same. So even in your best season. It's not going to stay the same. So you got to know that in your worst season, it is a season. It's not going to stay the same. It's going to change. So if you can muster up enough strength and energy to keep going, you'll be okay. I have the chills, faith of a mustard seed. You'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And even now, I think part of my superpower, well, my superpower is my confidence, but my confidence is in the understanding and the knowing of who I am. But not because I'm Mich- the Michelle Lopez, which I am, honey. Not v, because don't of forget that. the V. Not because of that. But it's because I understand whose I am. And I know because of my life and what I've been through that I have been covered. I am always covered. And so even in the times that I don't know what the next step is, I know that it's coming. So I do nothing, but I keep moving until I go, okay, that's it. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing about your generation is a hustle culture. Yes. But just because you're moving don't mean that you're accomplishing anything. That's That's the first thing. And the second thing is I don't subscribe to that culture. I subscribe to being still daily, asking God for wisdom on what it is that I am to do that day. Because in the Bible, it says tomorrow will take care of itself. Exactly. You have to worry about today, which means I want to maximize every moment, every minute of today. And God, I don't know how to do that fully. I know what I know, but there are so much, there's so much that I don't know. So give me wisdom. Give me wisdom on what to do. Let me see every opportunity in front of me, right? So that I don't have to hustle. I can play chess. Mm -hmm. That's not hustling. Yeah. Work smarter, not harder. Mm. Cheers to that. Oh, that's a (laughs) cheers. Mm-hmm. Okay, Michelle, one of the things I love most about you mm-hmm. and look up to you for is that you are a woman of many, many hats. Um, producer, mm-hmm. you know, real estate, a mother, mm-hmm. and a stylist and a designer, mm-hmm. too, mm-hmm. Um, with a beautiful women's wear line, which I'm excited to try on the dresses and Yay. to see all the colors and the designs today. But I first want to ask you, what was the inspiration behind starting this? Because it you, did you have this idea as a kid? Like, where did this begin Shout to start out. a line for women? So being a celebrity stylist for umpteen years, mm-hmm. you know, I was with the Yana Van Zandt for 10 years. I've done like 230 something shows, wow. tours and all of that for own just a whole bunch. Right. Um, once COVID hit, I said, oh, OK, I have some time now. Okay, didn't happen then. Let's just be clear. I right. didn't have time. COVID was crazy. I didn't for have everybody the time that I thought that I had. Yeah. Right. I start, I got another right. idea. And so I did that. And so, but I really started this as my initial idea was okay, I want to get some like boutique clothing, like clothing that I know from being a stylist that would look great on women. So I went to California. I, I flew to California. I went to New York and I got a wholesale license and I started pulling in boutique pieces. Right. So I'm like, oh, OK, I'm going to do that. I uh, was in Jamaica and I was thinking, OK, so we, we were working on the website, just putting the boutique pieces together, not Michelle's clothing line, just mm-hmm. the boutique pieces. And I had this idea and I'm like, what what is missing? So what what is the need that I can fulfill? Because that's really the idea. The intention. Yes. And so I felt like, OK, I love dresses. I felt like, you know, when a woman puts on like her best dress in her closet. She twirls around. Right. She looks in the That's mirror. Funny. She feels That's like honey. she can conquer the world. Literally. And it affects her entire life, right? And so I said, I think I want to create a dress. I still did not know. So, But I've been very intentional. Like this has been months and months and hours and hours of being intentional of how I was going to design the dress. Um, so I was, it was there in Jamaica that I had the idea for the dress. So I was out and I wanted to go in the general population. And so I just wanted to see what life was like because I'm always interested in how other people live. 
life, right? And I remember riding in the car and looking and, oop. It's okay. Sorry. It's real. I, um, I saw this woman and she was outside and she had a, like a tub and she was bathing her daughter. Mm. And I thought, you made me emotional too. No, and I thought, God, there's, I, first of all, I thought, how different from my life, but how much the same. That every step of the way, I've had to use what was in my hand to make something out of it. And I thought, If I'm going to do this, and I'm going to create, and I want to create the dresses, then how about I find some women here so that possibly I can change their, I can help change their life. And so that's what I did. We found uh, women in Jamaica that could sew, and honestly, they were only used to sewing uniforms. And that because I've done this for so long, I went in and I had to over and over and over again, and I taught them how to do things my way because I'm used to doing things for television and of course they weren't. And so they got it. And so for me, it's bigger than even just the dresses. The dresses were designed for women to feel beautiful, to feel confident, to show up and own their power. And the other side of it is that I have a whole sew team full of women and me creating this business has literally changed their life. And so I think that using what you have in your, and all of us can do that. God is not doing anything new, nothing. He's already given you everything that you need to do everything and accomplish everything that you need to accomplish. You've got to decide, okay, I'm going to use what I have and I'm going to use it to the best of my, no matter the circumstance, and I'm going to do what I need to do. And when you do that, for me, I call it showing up for yourself. So when you show up, he shows out. (laughs) I like that because that is true. It is the truth. That is true. When you decide that you're going to develop and develop yourself and do what you're called to do, he distributes. Mm -mm. And so that really has been the case with this line. That's why I created these dresses. I created them for women. I've been intentional about even how I've done it. But even the idea of, you know, and it took a lot. Listen, I just want to be very clear. You know, me having this idea and me having the vision I had no idea how I was going to get it done. When I said, God, I want to help and I want to do this and I want to change the lives of these women. I don't know why people think that you embark on a journey because you have an idea and you're brave enough to put it out there that it's going to be easy. This has not been an easy road whatsoever. But when I tell you every bit of it has been worth it for me to to walk and be out somewhere and to see a woman and, and something that I've created, but not just that I've created but the way her stance has right, changed, how walk. she walk in, and it's just like, yes, that's it. That's how I want you to feel. Because that is the confidence that I've developed over the years. And that is what I wanted to have when I put out this line, and that is what it's accomplishing. And so on the days that I get really, really tired, because not every day is a great day, I'm just intentional. I'm extremely intentional. I'm intentional of how I want to show up in the world. I'm intentional about what I want to leave with people when I enter a room. And then when I have left it, I'm intentional about, I want women to understand that when they walk into a room, that it the energy will shift. Well, that they belong there and that they have something that the room needs. And I want them to feel confident in that. And so it's been like this journey. I mean, literally, I I launched it March, the first day of Women's History Month. Oh, that's 2022. And I can't tell you how the whole year has been exhausting, amazing, never in like, I didn't, this wasn't a dream. I had a vision of what I wanted to see and I just did it and, and, and God has put his hand on it. So where it will go from here, I don't know, but here's what I do know. Nobody talks about people that just have thoughts. That's a fact. They only talk about people that have had a thought and been brave enough to actually do the work and put action to it and make it happen.